the results are in. So what is the battery state of health of this 219,000 mile electric van and does it need a new battery? This is my 2021 Vauxhall Vivaro E-Life that I bought sight unseen from auction a few weeks ago uh, and it has 219,000 miles on the clock. If you haven't seen the first video, this vehicle was used as a taxi in Milton Keynes for the four years since it was first registered and it clocked up a whopping 219,000 miles in that time. Now, loosely looking for a van, I stumbled across this and well, I had to have it and it came pretty cheaply as well, or at least at a price I was really happy with. There was a slight downside in that it didn't have an MOT and there was no indication at all of what the battery health was apart from being able to see the sort of predicted mileage and stuff at the state of charge it was at. So needless to say it was a little bit of a gamble. The first hurdle, the MOT, was actually fairly straightforward. Now normally I would have brought this in and done a full sort of mechanical inspection like I do for cars that I'm s selling on. Uh, and made sure they didn't need anything urgently or wasn't going to fail the MOT when I presented it for one. But with my workshop a bit full at the moment and me a little bit unsure of whether this will actually fit on my lift because it's uh, quite long being the long wheelbase version. I thought, sod it, we'll check the basics, we'll check the, the lights and the wipers and the, all that stuff that you can check just with it sitting, right? And put screen wash in it and all that stuff. We'll put it in for an MOT and well we'll see what happens uh the place i use for mot's only does mot's they don't do repairs at all so it's kind of one of those if, if you send something there and it fails it's a little bit of a pain to get that sorted out so i like to present cars for tests that aren't going to fail where possible but i thought it was worth a chance it, it seemed to drive okay so we took it in for a test and actually it absolutely flew through the mot it passed with no advisories whatsoever which is a really really good result Literally all I did before it went in was put some screen wash in it because it was empty and I replaced both rear indicator bulbs because they were both really quite white. The, the orange coating like flakes off the bulb and they go white and it will fail for that if it, it doesn't have orange indicators. So, uh, you know, pretty easy stuff. A couple of pounds worth of bulbs and screen wash and we got a clean MOT with no advisories whatsoever. And having now actually driven it on the road, uh, for for a bit of an extended period of time, did like an 80 mile round trip in it the other day, I would say it drives really quite well indeed. Now, that's fairly predictable. It was being used as a taxi. Obviously, say what you want about the standard of, of private hire taxis on the roads, but they do need to be kept in reasonable fettle at the end of the day if they're not working properly, they're not earning and therefore it will have had that sort of wear and tear stuff, you know, tires, brakes, suspension, done. I have no doubt about that, that it will have been kept in reasonably good fit. Uh, there were a few advisor items on the previous MOT, but that was 60,000 miles ago. And so it would be hard to believe that those could have been left for that long. They were maybe left for a little bit, but 60,000 miles is a lot of miles. And it was quite likely that they had been done. One of the ones I could look at was a, there's a CV boot, the near sight outer CV boot was an advisory on that MOT and I could see by just having a look behind the wheel that that had clearly been replaced and was in good fettle. So clearly has had some maintenance and therefore not too surprising. It drives really really well. I, I think you'd be really hard pushed to tell that this had done quite as many miles as it has. Don't get me wrong, it's not like driving a brand new van. You can tell it has some miles up it, but 219,000 is an awful lot. And you know, without it being reasonably well maintained, it wouldn't feel as good as it does. I think the front shock absorbers are maybe a little bit tired. Obviously not bad enough to uh, be even advised on the MOT. And to be honest, shocks need to be really, really bad before they'll even be mentioned on the test. So I'm not really surprised, but they, they just, they're maybe a little bit bouncier than, than they probably should be, but still working as expected and, and still perfectly sort of safe and legal. Maybe something you look at in the future, but for now, it doesn't seem to want for much. About the only mechanical thing I think it needs is uh, the front wheels need balancing because uh, quite a bit of jitter in the steering above 60 mile an hour. Now, 
I, you always fear with that that actually it's the you know the rims are buckled and that kind of thing but there was no mention of any sort of distortion of the wheels or anything on the MOT so fingers crossed it's just either had the, the tires that are on it which look quite new fitted in a bit of a hurry and they weren't really balanced up properly or maybe you know bouncing off curbs and stuff like that they're just a little bit out of balance so we'll need to get it in somewhere and get that looked at we'll get the wheels balanced I, it would probably benefit from a front wheel alignment too the alignment's just a little bit off so i'll take it to a tire place get the front wheels balanced and get the alignment done as well and i think that will really really sort out how well it drives on the whole i'm not worried about it i don't think it's going to need very much I'm going to have to replace this air vent which was missing uh there's a picture from the auctions here you can see that the, the driver's side air vent is just not here anymore uh, i did find a little bit of it so the sort of front trim from it is here uh, I'm guessing the vent actually broke. I wonder if they had a, like a, you know, a mobile phone or the, the taxi booking thing wedged on the vent all the time and it broke the vent eventually. Best guess would be what happened to that. But £21 later, I've got a new one, well, a second-hand one coming via eBay. So we'll sort that out. And apart from that, that's about the only sort of trim bit that really needs attention. The seats are a little bit tired and they're a little bit flatter than they used to be, but they cleaned up okay. So we're quite happy there. And therefore... That's probably going to be about the gist of, it, of any work I'm going to do to this. At the moment, this isn't a retail vehicle. It's just one I'm going to be using for hauling stuff around. I don't know, you probably can't see behind those seats, but there's a, a fully boxed e-bike behind there at the moment that I, I've brought here to review. So I, there'll be a, another e-bike review coming pretty soon. And this is quite handy for hauling stuff like that around. But the question you're all waiting for is, what is the battery health like? And so... What we've done to assess battery health on this is I've generated a battery certificate. Now, uh, if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I'm, I use MOBA battery certificates and everything that I sell has a battery certificate generated for it. In fact, you'll see I've got a Renault Zoe sitting there that's for sale at the moment and we've got the battery certificate in the window there. Because I like to be fully upfront about battery health when I'm, for, for anything I'm selling. I find it's really really good for consumer confidence people know exactly what they're buying that's a 16 reg Renault Zoe with uh, 68,000 miles on the clock and it has 95% battery state of health so it's in really really good order and it's only 3995 if you would like a 22 kilowatt hour Zoe give me a call but anyway the battery health of this so uh, first thing I'm going to say when I show you the results, so I've got it printed in front of me, but it's going to say it is a Vauxhall Zafira E Life. Now, the reason for that is MOBA is a French company, and in the rest of Europe, this vehicle is sold as an Opel Zafira E Life. So it's not a Vivaro E, it's a Zafira E. Obviously, here in the UK, it's a Vivaro E Life. Um, it manages to pick up from the VIN of the vehicle that it's a Vauxhall, but it doesn't know that this is a Vivaro, it thinks it's a Zafira. Uh, apart from that, you know, everything on here is exactly as it should be. Um, we've got the VIN, the mileage and all that stuff. And I can reveal, now quite a lot of you were guessing about this in the comments of the previous video. Uh, I will go through and see if anybody got it right. But 89% is the state of health of this battery at 219,148 miles. Now, I think that is quite remarkable. Uh, if you think about how things like Leafs and stuff tend to age, uh, I mean, I, I see Leafs with 50,000 miles on the clock that are hovering around the kind of 80% mark. Uh, it's 89% state of health at 219,000 miles, I think shows with these more modern EVs with proper battery thermal management, proper cooling, state of health just isn't something you need to worry about. Now, it's great to be informed, and the battery certificate does a really good job of doing that. However really isn't a worry uh, so many of these modern vehicles are doing so so well for battery health so if we if we read the the bump on the certificate here it says we have 40.94 kilowatt hours of remaining usable capacity of the 46 kilowatt hour usable that i had when it was new now this is a 50 kilowatt hour battery but 46 is usable in the top end buffer it, it, it is the difference between that and the 50 so um and this predicts therefore that in mixed use uh, this has a 
120 to 133 mile range in the summer and 97 to 108 miles range in the winter. Now, I think that ties in really, really well with 120 miles we get predicted on the dash when we're charged to 100%. Um, it seems the, the WLTP range of this when it was new was 143 miles. And if we adjust that for the state of health, we reckon it will do 120 to 133 miles. Uh, and so it, it seems that the the guessometer is doing a good job as well of tracking the sort of available capacity and giving us a prediction based on that. Now, time will tell what the real range of this is when we start using it. But I'd say based on the state of health, it, it is still really quite strong. Um, the fact we, we've lost about five kilowatt hours of usable capacity really doesn't make that much of a difference to how far it's going to go on a charge. Uh, I think at the moment this is doing 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. So based on that, we know we're, we are down about fi just under 15 miles of usable range from when it was new in 219,000 miles. So do you think battery health is actually something you need to worry about? Or actually, if this was an average mile, mileage of ROE that had done 40, 50,000 miles, it's going to be healthier than this one and therefore you know do you really need to worry i don't think you do i think being informed super important but is it something that you'll keep you awake at night i absolutely don't think so um we can see as well the other information on this certificate that the maximum voltage difference between cells is 19 millivolts which is i would say really quite he healthy for the age and mileage as well uh, that's nothing to worry about at all so we, we have a fairly well balanced pack the cells are all of a fairly similar voltage there's not that much difference between them and therefore i say the battery pack in this vehicle is really quite healthy and uh well time will tell how long it's going to last from here but i'd have no reason to worry about it at all so that is pretty much it for this video next time i will probably bring you some kind of range test with this I will try and go on a bit of a longer journey and see just what it will manage on a full charge. I think that will be quite interesting to compare what real life looks like versus what we have on paper. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Is 89% more or less than you predicted? And how do you think this is shaping up and what kind of confidence does that give you in a used EV going forward? Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.